but don't let them come close. <laughs> Just keep walking by. This is way lighter than he normally is. Okay. So now turn around and come back again. Okay, really good. All right, so you here, take Melina, or yeah, yeah, Melina. So many dogs to remember the name. And then uh, you take the phone here. So normally you're saying that was like way worse, pulling harder, barking harder. Way, yeah. seriously, way so, worse. So we've just been working a little bit with the leash in the house, so that's actually really good. So now we'll just show, so Anytime they go quick forward, you pull up and then release. It's not a snap, it's a pull. And then what we want is to focus, see those ears. It's when those ears go forward. So as you see a dog, don't look at the dog because then he thinks you're concerned about the dog. You turn your upper body and watch him. The whole time you walk by, you watch him. So the second those ears go up, you give the correction and the ears should go back. When the ears are forward, he's focused on something else. When the ears are back, he's focused on you. Okay? And all I'm saying to him when he does is don't focus on the other dog. It's not your job to be territorial. It's mine. But we're not meeting that dog, and that dog isn't, isn't a threat. And even if it was a threat, I'm going to deal with it, not you. So just ignore the dog, and we'll just walk by. Okay? Going this way is harder because I'm not in between. Now I just pull the handle of the leash. Now I'll ask you to stop right in front here. Look at me. See the focus? I'm just correcting the focus. He looks at me, and then I lick his neck. And now he doesn't focus on the dog at all. But he's also now associating that dog with the affection of the mother. Now, if I want him to meet that dog, I don't let him go in front of me to the dog. I lead him to the dog. And this is where I'm teaching him how to approach a dog. It's disrespectful to run up to another dog. You can run up to within three or four feet, but then you gotta stop and walk the rest of the distance. You always have to walk up to the other dog. So I teach him that by asking him to walk up to the other dog. Follow him, okay? I say, go see, go see, go see. And I bring him to the bum. Because I wanna teach him to go to the bum first. When you have very dominant dogs, alphas and high-level betas, they're gonna to go to the face first. And if that other dog is a high level alpha beta, you're gonna have a problem. But we always wanna teach him go to the bum first. And Melina's doing what she should do, which is just completely ignore him, okay? So this is a friend's dog, this is what you do. So now you do what you do. And then if you wanna introduce him before you go in the yard or in the house, take him for a walk together. And you see, he's starting to focus on the head if you get head to head, right? I just collect that phone. Okay. All right. So now let's watch this in slow motion just where the owner is walking his dog at first so we can see the things that are happening here so that when you have a reactive uh, or, or a dog that's reactive aggressive on the leash to help you understand how what you're doing and the leash in most cases creates and in every case intensifies the behavior that you see it's all in the leash now the first thing we see as we start is a dog is in front of the owner. This is a beta dominant dog. I know that because of the way the dog reacts when it sees other dogs. 
<clears throat> when the dog is in front of you, it's taking on the lead role, it's taking a uh, mother role, doesn't matter, it's in front, it's the first one that comes into contact with threats, challenges, and dangers. And when a dominant dog is walking, they're either patrolling their territory or they're hunting. That's it. Dogs just don't go for walks. So this is a dog patrolling its territory in front of its owner and it sees another dog in its territory because it's there. Wherever it is, it's its territory. So that dog is in its territory. <clears throat> the first thing we do is start looking at the dog, which is what we see here. It's focused on the other dog, okay? And already... He's starting to pull slightly towards the other dog. A lot of tension in that leash. Totally leaning, fully focused, eyes not blinking, eyes open full, not open wide. And this is something I see all the time, where the owner just lets their dog walk right up to the other dog. And you should never allow your dog to do that. Never. And this is why. It's because if you have a dominant dog, now your dog is challenging the other dog. And that's exactly what's going on here. He comes right up, face to face to Melina, to say, hey, who are you? What are you doing in my territory? Okay? But in this moment, he's, he's quite calm. He's quite reserved. You see, the eyes are open. The pupils are dilated. He's not blinking. But uh, <clears throat> the hair on his back isn't raised uh, full is partially raised now what we need to see here we got tension on the leash okay now watch right here right there this is where the owner starts to pull the leash and you see the dog's body start to move back okay now this is important because dogs are into pressure animals like horses humans are away from pressure so if I push on you, you're going to move away from the push. If you push on a dog or a horse, they're going to move into the push. That's a natural response, subconscious. You have no control over that. It's just a natural response. So when you pull back on the leash or the dog moves forward and comes up tight on the leash and you put in that tension to hold your dog back, the pressure is coming backwards towards you. So the dog is going to go into that pressure, which means the dog is going to pull. The harder you pull back, the harder the dog pulls forward now what happens in this moment where the dog is already in level nine alert full focus challenging that other dog and you put that more tension into that leash to pull the dog back that sends the dog right into that fight and you see that here with this little fella so there's the tension and right there see split second the tension is put in the leash. He digs in those hind legs, hind feet, and he starts digging, trying to move forward. Now, up to this point, my girl Melina hasn't said anything to him at all. But right here, now he really starts meaning business of pulling in hard. <clears throat> See his mouth open there? And this is where Melina, right there, that's one, two. She gives two barks with with a, a a little jump forward that's not a lunge that's a little jump forward she can move forward the leash is not tight on melina it's a loose leash she could move forward but she's not because she's a balanced dog and she's just holding her ground look at that little fella's face see he's full-on challenging now now the owner had said as you heard in the video that this is actually not bad behavior he's usually much worse than this so up to this point, I'd already spent, an, uh, I think, an hour inside the house with this Frenchie and their other Frenchie. And I spent a couple of minutes walking this Frenchie in the house. And then I just spent a couple of minutes walking the Frenchie out here on the sidewalk. And then we brought out the dog. And that's when this video started. Okay. So you see Melina reacting to him pulling there, see? And now this is where he's saying, yeah, you're lucky my dad's got that leash. Yeah, yeah, you're lucky. I'm coming back. You don't you worry, I'm coming, I'm, I got your number, I, I see you, I'm coming back, don't you worry. And right there, he looks up his dad. You see that? He looks up at his dad. Did I do a good job, dad? Was that good? And then right back out in front of the father again. Turns back again, yeah, yeah, I'll see you again, don't you worry. And then they turn, and right away, boom, focuses back on Melina again. 
right? What does he do? Starts walking right towards Melina again. Tension in the leash. Now his fur is up more. See? And he's just pulling hard to get into the Melina. And the owner gives a little pull on the leash there. And he turns and starts to move with the owner. And that's because the owner has already seen me giving these little snap to the leash. And he gave a little bit of a snap tug to the leash. And that's why the dog diverted its focus and put his focus back on him. So in both directions, the dog is in front. The dog is pulling towards the other dog. And that's why we're having these issues. As you saw, once I took the leash and just asked the dog to follow me and then corrected every time he focused on the other dog, there was no issue. Just that change in position in many cases, 80% of these cases, just the change in position is all that's needed. When the dog is behind you, calm and relaxed, you'll have no more reactivity. As soon as that dog's head goes in front of your leg, and all it needs is for your leg to be by their shoulder, so their head is just in front of you, they're going to be reactive because they're now in front. Whether it's the alpha leading the pack or whether it's a dog mother leading her babies. You have to be in front whenever you see a threat, challenge, or danger. And when you see another dog on your leash walk, you have no idea what that other like dog is like. Whether it's on leash or not, you have no idea what that other dog is like. Your dog should go behind you until you know for sure that that dog is safe. Then you can allow your dog to go see by introducing your dog to the other dog as I showed you in the video. Now let's watch that part of the video again. But don't let them come close. <laughs> Just keep walking by. This is way lighter than he normally is. Okay. So now turn around and come back again. 